Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Games Digital video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the next generation GeForce and Quadro graphics cards from NVIDIA as they pass through EEC, also known as the Euro Asian Economic Union. So, a user by the name of Kamishi has actually spotted these various products. And this is very exciting because it tells us that the launch is getting very, very, very close indeed. And there are actually a lot of these different GPUs. So what's going on here? Well, let's do a quick analysis. 699 for the products will represent the GeForce lineup. 900 series will represent the Quadro lineup. So that takes care of that part. So what we have here is PG150, 160, and 180. But what's important to realize is that those numbers, for example, 180 do not necessarily mean that that board would be for the GTX uh, 1180 or the 2080. So for example, we could have the uh, 160, which would be the 1080 part and so on and so on. But you'll notice that there are, first of all, three distinctive cards available here. And then after that, there is a whole slew of different numbers. So what exactly do the numbers after the, let's say the 160 represent? Well, those numbers represent different variants of the board. So this could be everything from different power connectors. It could be different display ports. It could be different coolers. It could be a whole multitude of different reasons that these are here. But what we can probably say is that there are going to be three distinctive GPUs from NVIDIA ready for launch. So in theory, at least, we could, for example, see the 1160, we could see the 1170, and we could possibly see the 1180. So this is literally one of the last steps that uh, manufacturers would need to go through to be able to sell the cards in these regions. Obviously, these cards would need to also go through the uh, restrictions and requirements in other regions, and those so far have not been noticed. But still, this is a really good sign. It is telling us once again that the launch for these cards is getting ever closer. And of course, we've also seen various manufacturers as well tease the existence of these GPUs. We know there's that big event taking place around Gamescom. So I think it's fair to say that if you are considering buying a GPU, if you've got the funds, it might be worth waiting. The only reason I'd possibly suggest jumping on, let's say, a 1080 or a 1060 or something like that is for one reason only, and that is the price. NVIDIA are doing everything they can right now to get rid of the excess inventory, which is, by the way, another sure uh, sign that they are ready to launch the next generation. We've seen major price cuts in, in, uh, across the entire lineup of different products, as well as, of course, bundling various SSDs and other games and whatever else they can to just get rid of these darn 10 series cards. While we're on the subject of graphics cards, let's move over to the AMD Radeon Pro WX8200. So this appears to be a Radeon Vega 56 variant, and we can assume that we're going to be seeing ECC error correction here for the memory, and we can also see a few other small changes. Well, for one, of course, it has fewer compute units, but the other primary difference is we see fewer display ports, and we also have information thanks to CompuBench, it is worth noting that this is not the Vega 7 GPUs. These appear to be based upon Vega 14. Obviously, AMD are doing everything they can to expand their lineup in the professional market. So if you are interested in a Radeon Pro GPU, well, there you go. Now let's move over to the Threadripper 2990WX processor overclocked to insane levels thanks to liquid nitrogen. We see it running at 5.1 gigahertz and that equates to a Cinebench score of 7,618 points. Now, if you recall, the prototype Intel processor during Computex scored 7,244 on Cinebench and it was also overclocked uh, up to five gigahertz as well. But this is not exactly an apples to apples comparison. Sure, Intel were not using a traditional air cooler. They were using an industrial water cooling system. So yes, it is way beyond what the average user would put into their system. But even so, it is not liquid nitrogen. The second thing, of course, is that these numbers are, well, conducted with liquid nitrogen. This is not indicative of the type of performance that everyone is going to get. These numbers are obviously as like to tempt people into world records, to tempt people who want the absolute best performance. And of course, it makes really nice news headlines as well. But the fact of the matter is, 
the Fred Ripper 29 90 WX is a very impressive chip and it was clear that one of the whole reasons that AMD did this was to take the performance crown, and I say so in such a loose term since the prototype Intel chip had not even been released yet, they wanted to take that away and take away even yet more publicity from Intel. It was clearly a uh, move by AMD to take yet another stab at Intel's crown and I have to say AMD right now are doing a lot of the right moves when it comes to the PR side of things and since uh, we've heard so many delays at the moment of Intel's processors. Intel are obviously really facing a lot of pressure from AMD. To me though, the ludicrous performance numbers of overclocking the Threadripper 2990WX or any processor on liquid nitrogen is not necessarily the selling point of the CPU. The reason that I'm really excited about the Threadripper series or the Threadripper 2 series is because of the value proposition that I know it's going to bring to a lot of viewers. And once again, I do realize that not everyone needs 32 cores, 64 threads, but there are an awful lot of folks who need 16 cores at a decent price, or perhaps 24 cores at a decent price, or whatever number. And so if you are doing that type of work, and uh, you know you can't necessarily justify the cost of Epic, then without question, the Threadripper platform X399 is looking really good. And I, for one, I'm gonna be very interested to see how Intel are gonna respond, not just in terms of performance, but also pricing, which of course is a critical component to any uh, competition. And finally, let's discuss the 10nm Qualcomm Snapdragon 670. Specifically, this processor is looking to be extremely impressive. The 670 is 1.8 times faster in terms of AI performance compared to the 660, which is obviously an update to. The Hexagon 685 DSP has eight Cryro 360 cores, which uh, feature up to 15% better performance compared to the 660 Cryro uh, 620 cores. And the 670 also comes with the Adreno 615, which means up to 25% faster graphics rendering compared to uh, its predecessor. And supports up to eight gigabytes of low power DDR4X memory. Uh, smart devices which feature this particular processor are expected to start wending their way on to store shelves by the end of this year. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.